congratulations on getting a Brax2 phone. So what we're going to do is tell you how to set it up initially. So the first thing you want to do is install the SIM card. So I have a SIM card here and I have a SIM pin which you got in your package. So I'm going to now look at the position here. The screen is on top. It's actually facing away from me. And then I'm going to push the pin in here and pull out the SIM tray. So there's the SIM tray. Now look at the orientation of the SIM tray. Now this is very important that you put it back in the same manner here with this end pointed towards the bottom of the phone. And the SIM card itself has to be in here with the face of the SIM card upright. So if there's a SIM card and there's a little notch to it. The notch is in this corner. And as long as you do it like this instead of upside down, if you do it upside down, you're going to have a problem. And then you can now insert that in there. Now you can also put in two SIM cards. So there's a option here to put a second SIM card on there. Or you can put a SD card instead of the second SIM card, but positioned that way. You can see the shape of the SD card in there. So you can push it in and then you can start the phone. Okay, I got the SIM card in there and I'm, I'm going to turn on the phone. So the first thing you need to do is put in your screen protection method. You can put in a pin or a password. So I'm just going to put a pin in. And this is actually important because this is part of the encryption on Android. So if you don't put this in, you don't get encrypted drives. So I'm going to plug in my pin and then it's going to install apps for a few minutes or about a minute. And just when you see all these messages, just hit allow. Okay, so we're all set here. Now the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is activate the Wi-Fi as well. So I have the SIM card is active. I can see it up there. It actually says voice over LTE 4G. So that's all set. But I want to activate the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to go to network. And then I'm going to select the Wi-Fi in here. Select this one. Put in the correct Wi-Fi for your network and then back out. And we're all set. Now, just before we do anything else, I just want to make sure you check this. Check the mobile network. So in my case, I put a Ting mobile SIM card. And so it says Ting over there. And sometimes they don't properly send a network signal to the phone. So this is something you need to verify. So you go in there and make sure that it says all of that, mobile data, roaming, app usage, and go to advanced. Preferred network type should be 4G. And this is the one that's often the mistake, and you are going to be stuck with tech support at all of these MVNOs because they screw up on this all the time. Go to access point names, and then look at the access point names. And for example, in my case, it was set to tethering over there. That's not going to work. It's got to go into the one that says LTE. So you talk to your carrier and ask them what's supposed to be an APN. And then if it's not there, you can see there's a plus button there. You can add it. This is supposed to be automated. But many MVNOs really have bad support and they don't really have the proper tools and they don't update your phone. I find that this is not a problem with the actual carrier like T-Mobile or AT&T. This is more of a problem with MVNOs. So uh, I had a problem also even with Ting.com. In fact, it didn't activate the first time I put it in. And then a couple hours later, they sent me an email that says it's activated. And I used the actual IMEI of this phone. I didn't have to 
play any tricks there. Okay, so the access point name is the important one. If they ask you for values like what is the IMEI, go down here into system and in under OS version right there, you can see the IMEIs on there. Okay, so that's the one you have to read. There's a different IMEI for each slot. So typically you just give them slot number one. Or if you don't want to do that, you can use another phone. Just activate a separate phone and just transfer the SIM card over. It's going to work just fine. So you can do that too. I did that as well. So some people were saying they have a problem with Ting.com. Well, I have two phones here activated on Ting.com. One of them caused a problem for some unknown reason. And again, they corrected it automatically and they activated the phone themselves. I didn't have to do anything. And I, well... Correction, I did have to do something. Like I said, I had to go in here to uh, the mobile network, advanced, and select the correct APN. So I did have to do that. So it depends on the carrier. Some of them just are not very good at doing that. Okay, now we are all set with the network. So this phone has Wi-Fi and cell. And the other thing now that we're going to do is set up the app so here's how we do that the first thing we're going to do this is very important to follow these steps first thing you're going to do is go to F Droid give F Droid the permissions allow and it's going to say updating repositories this is very important so you let it do that but it must have a network connection before they can update the repository I'm just going to fast forward through this because it takes a while to do when we ship the phone, we're loading a version of the software that we want you to have. But by the time the phone gets to you, the version may no longer be up to date. And that's really what's been happening here. So what you need to do here is do an update. So you're, you can see there's an option for updates on the bottom. And it gives me the files that it wants to update, which is the Aurora Store. F-Droid itself and new pipe. This is very important that you update Aurora first. And then it's going to ask for permission. We're going to allow that. And then we can install. And then I can update new pipe. The important thing here is do F-Droid update last. This is F-Droid over here. Do that update last so that the screen doesn't change. Or it'll take you out. Okay, so now I can install the update to F-Droid. Now you're done with all the F-Droid app updates. Now, the only thing that you need to do here is update Signal. If you're going to use Signal, go to the Aurora store over here. So we're going to now confirm that. Allow Aurora. And then you can just ignore all that and just hit Accept. Check the Terms of Service. Hit Accept. Next, 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 next. This is the only thing you got to do. Grant installer permission. So you don't have to do it later. So grant permission to install from Aurora. And then finish. And then here, this screen changed. So if you're using an older version of Aurora, it's a little bit different. They made two options here, anonymous and anonymous insecure. So use the one that says anonymous. If Aurora fails, there's another option. It's apkpure.com. So you can go to that website if there's an emergency and you want to download something and, and Aurora goes down. Aurora goes down frequently. Okay, so the app we want to update is Signal. So we're going to look for Signal here. And there it is. And you need to do an update to Signal. These are the pre-installed software packages that need to be updated before you can use them. Okay, so that's done. So we're all set. Now you can install any app you want from the Aurora store. I don't recommend installing anything from Facebook or Meta. And you cannot install anything from Google. Now, let's say you want to use Waze. Now, I know Waze is Google, but 
they're not requiring Google services. So let's say you want to use Waze. So what you do is go to Waze and you're going to have to give it permission for location. You don't have to give permission for a lot of this stuff. But location it has to have. And then you allow it. And of course, I'm not going to give it any access to anything else. So there's the important thing. It says turn on GPS. If you don't do that, it doesn't work. So you got to turn on GPS. And it doesn't have permission for location. So that's why you got to turn on permission for location. So here we go as well. Okay, so it worked. Okay, so we figured out the ways. And if you need to access YouTube, you can go to New Pipe. There's an option called Orbot if you want to use Tor. This gives you encrypted internet access if you need to have this. It's very slow, so it's not for everyday use. And to use it, you just hit start. And then it makes a connection on Tor. Okay, so I'm not going to use this. So I'm going to stop it. I don't normally use Tor. Slow. I use a VPN. Okay, let's say you have a Bytes VPN account. How do you install the VPN on here? So you have open VPN. It's in that icon there. But before we do that, we need to download the profiles. So the way we do that is we go to the browser, which is DuckDuckGo. And you go to Bytes VPN dot com which brings up the website and all you need to do is go to the installation section here and select the VPN profile so these are the different VPN profiles for all the different areas and let's say we're going to select this one Los Angeles all you have to do is tap it allow allow let's say you want to use different profiles just tap it tap it and then it saves that okay now what happened where did it go well it went to files so I can show you where it is it goes to file manager allow file manager access and there it is under download so there are all the open VPN files OVPN files in download now this is the way you're going to install that first you go to open VPN give it the rights there are no VPN profiles and the way you add a profile is hit that plus button and you say import you see there's an import option there import and there you go you just pick that and pick the open VPN file that you want whichever one you want and that's it now to connect just tap on it and put in your username and password so I'll put one in And there it is it connects now to activate this at any time just go back and there's the option so you can disconnect or connect just by tapping that if you want to never type the password in again hit that button that says save password and there you go now you can have your VPN activated I'm gonna disconnect it right now so that's kind of the basic use of Brax 2. You can set up your K9 email for your email. You can go to BraxMe over there. And if you're going to install any app from the Google Play Store, you go to the Aurora Store. You can also install any app from F-Droid, which is usually safer. 
Now there are many advanced features here in the settings. For example, you can use this thing called Dura Speed, which allows you to specify which app you want to run in the background. And you would also want to set up fingerprints and face unlock if you want. Very important to understand what's in apps and notifications. Look at all your apps and see what permissions you gave to each one because if you don't have the proper permissions then the apps do not work. So enjoy, that's the basic start of how to use a Brax2 phone.